Welcome to Bedtime Stories with Mrs. Ferris. I'm Mrs. Ferris. This is my friend Bernard, and we're going to be ready to share a couple of stories, have some fun songs or finger plays, something on the flannel board, and we'll finish up with our rhyming going to bed book. So let's get started. But before we do, I'd love to know who is out there watching, so please feel free to say hi in the comments or uh, leave a message on this post. I may not respond during the story program because I am kind of concentrating on the words in the stories, but I'd love to know who's watching, so let's get going. Our first book is called Use Your Imagination, but be careful what you wish for. This is a book by Nicola O'Byrne, and it's published by Nosy Crow. What do you think? One day, Rabbit was feeling bored. I wish something would happen, he said. Excuse me, said a voice. May I help? It was Wolf. Well, maybe, said Rabbit. I'm bored. <laughs> well, why don't we write a story, said Wolf. I'm a librarian, you know, and librarians know lots of stories. You don't look like a librarian, said Rabbit. What big ears you have. All the better for listening to stories with, my dear, said the wolf. Hmm. And what big eyes you have, said Rabbit. All the better for reading with, my dear, said the wolf. Hmm. I'm sure I heard something like that before, said Rabbit. Never mind that, said Wolf quickly. Let's get on with the story. But how do we start? asked Rabbit. Well, you need to use your imagination. That means using words and pictures to create a story, explained Wolf. And of course, there's really only one way to begin a story. Once upon a time. But, but what's our story going to be about? asked Rabbit. Well, said Wolf, use your imagination. Space rockets, cried Rabbit. Big explosions and bananas. Oh, we need lots of bananas. I don't think so, said Wolf. What we need is a fairy tale, something to really sink your teeth into. And of, of course, all fairy tales need a bad guy. What about a mouse, asked Rabbit. Mm, I was thinking of something bigger, said Wolf. An elephant, said Rabbit. How about something medium size, said Wolf quickly. Oh, I know. What about you, said Rabbit. Mm, now that's a good idea. What next, asked Rabbit. Well, of course we need a hero. Me, 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 said Rabbit. What a great idea, said the Wolf. What will I wear? asked Rabbit. Oh, it doesn't matter much, said Wolf. Use your imagination. A space suit, cried Rabbit. Or, or a pirate hat. Or what about a little red cape? Oh, you probably don't need a costume, said the Wolf, smiling. But where does this story happen? asked Rabbit. Use your imagination, said Wolf. Oh, that's a tricky one, said Rabbit. What do you think? I was thinking of somewhere mm, tree, said Wolf. What about a forest, squeaked Rabbit. Oh, now that's a good idea, said Wolf. Rabbit felt very proud. We've got a bad guy, a hero, and a forest. Is the story going to start soon? Oh, yes, said the wolf, grinning. The story starts right now. Oh, I don't like.
like this story at all, panted Rabbit, as Wolf chased after him. Really? snarled the wolf. Well, don't worry. We're nearly at the end. I don't think so, said Rabbit, suddenly stopping. I'm the hero, after all, and I'm going to use my imagination. And so... Are you ready? Rabbit did. Oh, this isn't a good idea at all, said Wolf. But Rabbit grinned. Well, don't worry. We're nearly at the end. Five, four, three, two, one. Lift off. Blast off! Now that was a good idea, said Rabbit. Using your imagination is a wonderful thing. Indeed. Oh, Bernard, he fell down. Do you think he was jumping on the flannel board? I don't know, but I better get him. Because he should be with us. And I think we ought to have some, oh, we have a request. I was going to do monkeys jumping on the bed, but Jonah wants us to do a hot dog song, so get your hot dogs ready. I've got five little hot dogs cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Four little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Three little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Two little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. So one little hot dog is cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the one went bam. So can we do the last one? How many hot dogs do we have? None. So no little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the pan went bam. Well, our next story is a fun one. It's by one of my favorite authors, Jan Thomas, and it's called Here Comes the Big Mean Dust Bunny. It's by Jan Thomas and is published by Simon & Schuster. Do you know what a dust bunny really is? If you ever look under your bed, especially if you don't have carpet in your bedroom, and you see little things of dust, we call those dust bunnies. But these dust bunnies, well, I don't know. They look like they're real critters. Hello. We are Ed, Ned, Ted, and Bob. We rhyme all the time. And I'm the big, mean dust bunny. Interesting name. Want to play a rhyming game? No. Oh, come on. What rhymes with fit? Lit. Kit. A cat? I know, said the big mean dust bunny. Sit. Sitting is fun. Fun? Mm -mm. He weighs a ton. My turn. What rhymes with face? Race? Case? Vase? Cat? Chase! Chasing is fun. Fun? Run! 
My turn again. What rhymes with cat? He's been saying that all along, hasn't he? Splat! Well, look at that. <laughs> he is flat. Like a mat. Trap that cat. He may be a thug, but what rhymes with... What do you think they're going to do to him? Tug! Hug. My face feels weird. It's called a smile. So what do you want to do now? Chase the cat? Is there a big mean dust bunny in your neighborhood? Yikes! If you like that story, there's two others that kind of go with it. There's one about the cat, which is called, What Will Fat Cat Sit On? And then there's the first one actually about the dust bunnies, called The Rhyming Dust Bunnies. So you might want to check those at the library sometime. Well, somebody asked for sticky bubble gum, so you get better get your bubble gum ready, reach in your pocket, and remember, if you don't have a real pocket, pretend that you have a pocket. And pretend at the bottom of that pocket is a piece of pretend bubble gum. And take a look at it. If it has a wrapper on it, you certainly don't want to eat that. So unwrap it. Toss your wrapper in the trash. We're going to pop the gum in our mouths. Chew it up probably about, no, oh, 15 times until it's nice and soft and squishy. And... Then we're going to do something disgusting. You ready? Okay, pop your gum in your mouth and chew it up. Is yours ready? I think I need three more chews. Okay, put your hand out. I'm going to count to three. And we'll do the disgusting thing of spitting the gum into our hand. Ready? One. Two, three, and clap your other hand on top. And now your hands are stuck together with what? Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your chin. Now, if this is your first time coming to either pajama story time or bedtime stories here, you might not know how you can get your hand so it's not stuck on your chin anymore, but it's really easy. All you have to say is unstick. So let's say that together. Unstick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum. Stick it on your arm. Ready? Unstick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your cheek. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your back. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your nose. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Are you ready for the best part? Stick it on mom or dad. Go ahead. Stick your gum on them. I'm going to stick mine on Bernard. Are you there yet? Okay, then let's say unstick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your toe. Unstick. 
sticky sticky bubble gum sticky sticky bubble gum sticky sticky bubble gum ooh it's time to throw it in the trash well our next story is a new book at the library i think we had another one by this author um this is called the storybook night it's by Helen Dockerty and Thomas Dockerty, I'm assuming their husband and wife, and it's published by Sourcebook Jabberwocky. It's kind of a fun word to say, isn't it, Jabberwocky? Helen did the story and Thomas did the pictures. And there's the dragon. And that must be the knight. Hmm. Not very big, but maybe you don't have to be to be a knight. Leo was a gentle knight in thought and word and deed. While other knights liked fighting, Leo liked to sit and read. Maybe you can tell why I picked this book. He was kind to every creature, why he wouldn't even hurt a fly. And when mom and dad said, knights must fight, he couldn't quite see why. One morning, Leo's parents said they'd like to have a little chat. There was nothing wrong with reading, but he couldn't just do that. They'd seen an ad that morning in their favorite magazine. A dragon needed taming, and Leo wasn't very keen. Nonsense, you'll enjoy it, and it'll stop you getting bored. In case the dragon's scary, here's a brand new shield and sword. Did you notice this is a rhyming book? Leo packed some sandwiches and lots of books, of course. Then with a sigh, he saddled up old Ned, his faithful horse. He hadn't traveled far, though the sun had risen high, when suddenly a fearsome creature swooped down from the sky. A griffin, marveled Leo, who'd read about such things. Come on, snarled the griffin. I dare you to fight. Oh, I'd rather not, said Leo. It wouldn't be quite right. I've got my brand new sword with me, so I'd be bound to win it. But how about a story with some pictures of you in it? Yes, please, the griffin nodded. He was really rather vain. So Leo read a book to him once, twice, and then again. It's yours to keep, said Leo, as he clambered back on Ned. Oh, thank you, said the griffin, and he bowed his noble head. Well, Leo rode for hours, though the heat was quite extreme. And then he stopped to have his picnic by a welcome mountain stream. Uh oh, do you see who's there? Can you guess who that is? We'll find out. Who dares to trespass on my bridge? inquired a hungry troll. It's only me, said Leo. W would you like to share my role? The troll just laughed. No, thanks, he growled. I think I'll just eat you. But Leo said, my armor's pretty difficult to chew. I've got a brilliant book, though, if you'll hang on just a minute. It's full of juicy goats, and look, it's even got you in it. Mmm, that sounds good, the troll replied, his hunger put on hold. So Leo read the story with some changes, truth be told. It's yours to keep, said Leo, as he clambered back on Ned. Oh, thank you, cried the grateful troll, and he bowed his heavy head. Well, Leo kept on riding through that long, hot afternoon, and at last he came upon a town as empty as the moon. The leaves were burnt on every tree, the grass and flowers too. Faces peered from windows, 
folks too scared to go outside. He trotted bravely onward. Hey, watch out, the people cried. And what he saw around the corner set him shaking in his shoes. The most enormous dragon who'd just woken from a snooze. The dragon raised his eyebrows. Not another pesky night. Don't worry, Leo told him. I haven't come to fight. I've got the most amazing book with loads of dragons in it, but it's going in the trash unless you clean up right this minute. Oh, don't do that, the dragon cried. I'll clean it up right now, but I'm really bad at tidying. Perhaps you'd show me how? So Leo taught the dragon how to shovel, scoop, and clear and one by one, the townsfolk all began to lose their fear. Now can I have my story, begged the dragon on his knees. So Leo read the book six times, a dragon's hard to please. It's yours to keep, said Leo, as he clambered back on Ned. Oh, thank you, cried the dragon, and he bowed his scaly head. When Leo reached his home at last, the cheers were long and loud. His parents hugged him very tight. Well done, you've made us proud. Now Leo is a hero and his parents have agreed. He doesn't have to fight at all. He's left in peace to read. a nice way to end that story, don't you? Right. Well, should we do another finger player song? You've been sitting for quite a while. Do you think we ought to shake our sillies? Let's do it. Can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out? Shake, shake, shake your sillies out. Shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. And can you clap, clap, Clap your crazies out, clap, clap, clap your crazies out, clap, clap, clap your crazies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out, stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out, stretch, stretch, Stretch your stretchies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stand up? I'm going to stay seated so I can stay in the camera, but can you stand up? Because it's easier to jump that way. Can you, and I'll have Bernard jump, 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 jump your jiggles out, jump, jump, jump your jiggles out, jump, jump. Jump your jiggles out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you yawn? <sighs> yawn your sleepies out, yawn. <sighs> yawn your sleepies out, yawn. <sighs> yawn your sleepies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out? Shake, shake, shake your sillies out. Shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. Well, I think we're going to have one more book. And this is kind of a classic book. Um, let me just see. I always like to look and see when it was published. This was published in 1940. Now, that's probably even older than your grandmas and grandpas. But it's one we had as a story walk story, and I like to share it here, too. It's called Caps for Sale. It's by Esfer Slobokina, and it's published by HarperCollins. Collins. 
It's a tale of a peddler, some monkeys, and their monkey business. Once there was a peddler who sold caps, but he was not like an ordinary peddler carrying his wares on his back. He carried them on top of his head. First he had on his own checkered cap, then a bunch of gray caps, then a bunch of brown caps, then a bunch of blue caps, and on the very top, a bunch of red caps. And he walked up and down the streets holding himself very straight so as not to upset his caps. Can you sit up very straight? Yeah, like that. And as he walked along, he called, Caps! Caps for sale! 50 cents a cap! Now one morning, he couldn't sell any caps. He walked up the street and he walked down the street calling, Caps! Caps for sale! 50 cents a cap! But nobody wanted any caps that morning. Nobody wanted even a red cap. He began to feel very hungry, but he had no money for lunch. I think I'll go for a walk in the country, said he. And he walked out of town slowly, slowly, so as not to upset his caps. He walked a long time until he came to a great big tree. That's a nice place for a rest, he thought. And he sat down very slowly under the tree and leaned back little by little against the tree trunk so as not to disturb the caps on his head. And then he put up his hand to feel if they were straight. First his own checkered cap, then the gray caps, then the brown caps, then the blue caps, and then the red caps on the very top. They were all there, so he went to sleep. He slept for a long time. And when he woke up, he was refreshed and rested. Do you notice anything about him? Is anything missing? But before standing up, he felt with his hand to make sure his caps were in the right place. But all he felt was his own checkered cap. He looked to the right of him. No caps. He looked to the left of him. No caps. He looked in back of him. No caps. He looked behind the tree. No caps. And then he looked up into the tree. And what do you think he saw? On every branch sat a monkey, and on every monkey was a gray, or a brown, or a blue, or a red cap. Well, the peddler looked at the monkeys, and the monkeys looked at the peddler. He didn't know what to do. Finally, he spoke to them. You monkeys, you, he said, shaking a finger at them. You give me back my caps. But the monkeys only shook their fingers back at him and said, tss, tss, tss. Well, this made the, monk, the peddler angry, so he shook both hands at them, and he said, You monkeys, you! You give me back my caps! But the monkeys only shook both their hands back at him and said, tss, tss, tss. Well, now he felt quite angry. He stamped his foot and he said, you monkeys, you, you better give me back my caps. But the monkeys only stamped their feet back at him and said, tss, tss, tss. Well, by this time, oh, the peddler was really very, very angry. He stamped both his feet and he said, you monkeys, you, you must give me back my caps. But the monkeys only stamped both their feet back at him and said, can you say it too? Tss, tss, tss. Oh. Well, at last, he became so angry that he pulled off his own cap, threw it on the ground, and began to walk away. But then, each monkey pulled off his cap and all the gray caps 
and all the brown caps and all the blue caps and all the red caps came flying down out of the tree. So the peddler picked up his caps and put them back on his head. First his own checked cap, then the gray caps, and then the brown caps, and then the blue caps, and then the red caps on the very top. And slowly, slowly, he walked back to town calling, Caps! Caps for sale! Fifty cents a cap! I wonder what happened to those monkeys. We may never know. Well, let's have our story on the flannel board. This is an old jump rope rhyme. But we're not going to jump any rope with it. So, do you know who this is? Let me get it right in there. This is Miss Lucy. Miss Lucy had a baby. And his name was Tiny Tim. She put him in the bathtub. to see if he could swim. Well, he drank up all the water and he ate up all the soap. He tried to eat the bathtub, but it wouldn't go down his throat. So Miss Lucy called the doctor. Miss Lucy called the nurse. Miss Lucy called the lady with the alligator purse. Hold on, Miss Lucy, hold on just a minute. Well, in came the doctor, and in came the nurse, and in came the lady with the alligator purse. Looks like measles, said the doctor. No mumps, said the nurse. Nonsense, said the lady with the alligator purse. He needs some penicillin, said the doctor. Castor oil, said the nurse. Oh no, how about some pizza, said the lady with the alligator purse. Should we eat the pizza with them? And then out went the doctor. And out went the nurse. And out went the lady with the alligator purse. We'll leave them to finish while we have our last story. And this is called The Going to Bed Book by Sandra Boynton, published by Little Simon. And this is the one we read every week when it's time to say goodbye. Well, the sun has set not long ago. Now everybody goes below to take a bath in one big tub with soap all over, scrub, scrub, scrub. They hang their towels on the wall and find pajamas, big and small. And with some on top and some beneath, they brush and brush and brush their teeth. And when the moon is on the rise, they all go up to exercise. And then down once more, but not so fast. They're on their way to bed at last. The day is done. They say good night. And somebody turns off the light. The moon is high. The sea is deep. And they rock and rock and rock to sleep. So I hope you're all ready to go to bed. I don't know if it's your bedtime yet or not, but we hope you'll join us again next uh, Wednesday night for Bedtime Stories with Mrs. Ferris. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.